Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and in today's episode we will be discussing about FIFO queues and we'll do a short hands-on demo on that. So if you're ready, let's begin. So as we have already discussed about FIFO queues, I would request you to please watch the previous episodes that we have on SQS and here we'll be doing a short hands-on demo. So for this, log into your AWS console and type in simple queue service. Okay, you can select it from the drop down as well and click on create queue. So here we have already done the hands on demo for standard queues. Now we'll go ahead with FIFO queues. So select this option FIFO and here you can just click on info to read some details about FIFO queues as well. So FIFO queue supports up to 3000 messages per second. Each message is delivered exactly once and message ordering is preserved because it's a FIFO queue. So first in first out. So the execution also will be from first in and first out. So the first one which gets inside the queue will be executed first and the same way others will be executed. And FIFO queues are designed to enhance messaging between application when the order of operation and events is critical or where duplicates can't be tolerated. So this is a brief introduction about FIFO queues. So the name of the FIFO queue must end with dot FIFO suffix. So now we have to give it a name. So I'll give it my new FIFO queue. So it has to end with FIFO. So we have to type FIFO. So my new FIFO dot FIFO. You have to remember that for FIFO queues, you have to type dot FIFO as a suffix. And my name is case sensitive and can have up to 80 characters. You can use alphanumeric characters, hyphens and underscores as well. Here we have the same configuration that we had for the standard queues. You have the visibility timeout that I'm setting into 30 seconds. Message retention period is four days. We don't want to have any delayed deliveries and the message size or the maximum message size is 256 KB. And here there is one more option that you get content based deduplication. So when content based deduplication is enabled, the message deduplication ID is optional. So if you click on this one, what happens in FIFO queues is you will have a message group ID. So the message group ID will ensure that the same message, if you send it with the same group ID will not be duplicated. Okay. And the access policy, I'll set it to simple or basic and the encryption is optional. I'm not going to give any encryption details here and I'll not give the dead letter queue here as well. I'll not create any dead letter queues. Tags is also optional. If you want, you can provide any key or value pair that you want, but for now I will not be giving that. And the next thing that you have to do is just you need to click on create queue. So now your queue, my new FIFO dot FIFO is created successfully. Now you can send and receive messages. So once your FIFO queue has been created, you can see the details here. So there's the name of the queue that we have, my new FIFO dot FIFO. The type of the queue is FIFO. Previously, if you have created a standard queue, if the type will be actually standard here. Okay. And here is the AWS resource name and this is the queue URL. And dead letter queue is disabled, encryption is disabled. And if you want to see more options, you can just see more details about this one. Okay. And the next thing that we have to do is we have to send and receive messages. So click on that and come here. And here you get the same thing. We have to act as our producers and consumers. So once again, I will type hello first message. Okay. And you have to provide a group id so here i will provide my group one so this is my group id and if you want you can add message attributes as well like let's suppose i add name and the value will be like hello world and if you want to add more attributes you can click on add new attributes and add them as well okay so now we are done with the message configuration that we want to send so just click on send message. Okay. So here, as I have made a mistake here that I should not be using any spaces in between them. I can just type underscore and I'll click on send message. Okay. So your message has been sent and is ready to be received. Here in the receive message section, you can see we have one message that is available to us. The polling duration is 20 seconds and maximum message count is 10. Okay. And let's suppose. I do a polling for these messages. You have to click on poll for message here or you can click here as well because this is the empty list that we are having right now. I'll just click on poll for messages. 
so this is the message that we have received and if you click on this one id so you will see the md5 hash value of the message attribute this is the message group id from where we have sent the message this is the sequence number that we have and basically you can see the body so this is the hello first message and this is the attribute name is the type string and the value is hello world okay so now what happens is i can send the message again so now the second message has already been delivered so if i do a receive message or a poll for messages you can see the same message is coming once again but it is not creating any new ids for that so it is treating it as the same message because we use the same message body and the same group id as well and you might ask why this is because of the message group id so what message deduplication actually helped us is with that if you send the same message again with the same group id it will consider it as a same message and it will not consider that as a new message okay so let's suppose you might ask like how we will get the next message then from the same group id i can just edit the message to second okay and if i send it with the same message group id you will see there is there are two messages left and once i do polling for this one you will see the id has changed so let's suppose i create a message here and i have the message group id is one and i'll send this message okay and we have one message available and if suppose i send the same message again still has one message available right now so that was because of the deduplication id that i already explained you but now i'll change the message okay and send the message again so now we have two messages available i'll show you some small information about the deletion part so you have the poll for messages here right you can just click on poll for messages you will receive two messages here and during the poll message period or the polling progress you will be able to delete it and if the polling period actually crosses then you will not be able to delete it you don't believe me just have a look now it's almost completed now the polling period is over if i click on any message and click on delete it will not be deleted because the recipient handle has expired okay so what it tells is between the period where the handle is currently in progress or valid then only you can delete the queue and that is basically because of your polling duration or that is the visibility timeout period okay so within that period only it will be visible to the consumer who is trying to consume it or delete it and after that it will not be visible but we can do this i can if suppose you want polling duration to be increase it to 30 seconds i can do that and save it if i start polling once again and i click on any of the message i can delete it okay so that was a small and simple demo that i wanted to show you guys and you can just also try that and see what are the options that are available to us and for more information you can read the aws documentations as well that would be my recommendation so i hope you enjoyed it this was a short and simple so if you liked what you saw please hit the like button comment on what you liked what you didn't make sure you subscribe to the channel and let's be friends on instagram join me at tougher apollo and to watch more, please click on the videos on the tab shown in the screen. Until then, it's Pythaholic signing off.